UTPA men's basketball returns from their longest road stretch for their longest homestand. We'll take you to all the action. UTPA women's basketball taking advantage of an extended break between games. And there's a new volleyball coach on campus. We'll meet them together. This is Bronx Country. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Bronx Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. The University of Texas Pan American men's basketball team recently completed a three-game homestand, doubling the number of home games they've played. Entering the start of that stretch, the Bronx had played 10 of their previous 11 games on the road. Romeo Villarreal has more. The Bronx took part in a five-game road trip, which started back December 17th at St. Louis, and ended this past week with a Bronx win at home against Our Lady of the Lake. While the Bronx failed to pick up a win on the road trip, it was the competitive spirit shown by his players in these tough games that made Coach Hipshire optimistic about his team going into conference play. It was a competitive road trip, but I thought we had some opportunities if we were at full health uh, with Noriega and Equinabeta. We could have feasibly, even though we've played, I believe, the 125th rated schedule in the country right now, I, I really think we could be 10-4, and four, you know, but hey, that's life and uh you know you do your best and go on and other than the kent game uh i thought we competed really well out on the road and uh part of learning to play on the road is learning to go out in competition in your conference and play on the road which we did a good job of last year when on a long road trip like this it can be hard for players to adjust playing away from the comfort of their home court it may be weather, like one time in Ohio is around 20 degrees, you know, it may be weather, it may be just not being used to being in your own bed, living out of the hotel, um, the food, you not being able to work out or stretch, or do certain little things, get extra shots in that you do when you're at home. So any little things like that, that we kind of got to just mentally just get through together. With a conference that stretches from Seattle to right here in South Texas, Coach Hipshire believes that this long road trip right before conference play will help his players to adjust to long road trips during conference play. You know how difficult our league is travel-wise, and many of the games go Thursday, Saturday, so it's pretty tough on the kids. So learning how to be mature on the road, uh, game prep on the road, get ready to play is a big part of it. And, and then, you know, there's another part. We've got to make a little money for the university too, which is fine and dandy for us. We, we get to some neat places, St. Louis, Creighton, uh, Kent, Duquesne, uh, some nice buildings to play in. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villarreal. When the Bronx finally got home, they faced Our Lady of the Lake, the number 13 ranked team in the NAIA. And early on, Shaq Boga meets Shaq Hines. Bronx up 9-4. We're gonna see plenty more from Boga, but on the shooting side, makes it 17-15 there. The Saints were making threes at will, and they're up nine when Boga starts the comeback. A little later on, it's the other half of the Shaq attack. Bronx within one. Early second half, Bronx still down one. Boga, 42-41 Bronx. Now the Bronx are down two, but Boga, good in the foul. Boga hits the free throw, Bronx by one. 12 and a half minutes left. Game tied at 51, not anymore. Boga is on fire. Bronx trying to pull away. Boga hits the jumper, then the layup, then the three. Bronx by nine. The Saints came back to tie it at 70, and now they're within two with less than two minutes left. But with the shot clock winding down, look at Boga. Calm, cool, collected. And then the next time down the court, one more for good measure. Bronx win, 87-78. Greer high 29 points for Boga on 11 of 14 shooting. Hey, don't forget about Janari Josar. Ninth 20 point game of the season, fourth double-double. Among four Bronx and double figures, along with Hines and Dan Kamasa, and how about Elijah Watson with a career high eight assists? As a team, the Bronx shot a season best 571 from the field and a season best 794 from the line. I think in the second half we did a little bit, so they backed up a little bit. So uh, 
Yeah, I think we adjusted pretty good in the second half, not in the first half. We, we got down by nine because of that, but I think we did a good job. I've been on the road. Been on the road. We've been on the road for a minute, it seemed like. About eight game stretch. So just get home. I came home and just focused in, cleaning my room, uh, stayed in the gym, ate healthy. Just just try to focus in and, and have a good game. Just my main focus have a good game and get a win and get this thing rolling. He got some looks off of kickouts and late clock and, and just catch and shoot and knocked him down. He hit a big three against the zone. He had a driving couple layups and he's a pretty good scramble court player because he's a kind of a north south uh, attacker most of the time and uh, he, he made a couple mistakes with it but he, he don't mind playing in the park three days later Bronx opening whack play against Chicago State and Shaq Boga picking up right where he left off puts the Bronx up for nothing then it's the other half of the Shaq attack Hines with a nice move underneath the basket next time down the court Hines, good in the foul. He hits the free throw for the three-point play, and then Hines finds the sweet spot. The Bronx led by as many as seven. After a 10-0 Cougars run puts Chicago State ahead, the Bronx respond. Hines gives the Bronx an 18-17 lead, and a few minutes later, the Bronx are down one, make it up one. Early second half, Bronx down two, but Janari Josar having none of that. The Bronx take the lead. After a Montana bird three puts the Cougars ahead again, Boga ties it, and then Hines unties it. Midway through the half, the lead is one when Boga nails the three. The Bronx kept their lead between four and six for the rest of the game, winning the whack opener 64-59. Four Bronx in double figures scoring for the fifth time this season, Boga played all but 13 seconds while leading the Bronx again this time with 17 points. Strong games for Hines and Kamasa inside. Josar scored 11 of his 14 points from the free throw line as the Bronx had their best free throw shooting game of the season, going 26 for 32. That's 81%, folks. I say we, we all had to play tough. Like you see, we have four guys in double digits, so I think we did really well collectively. Yeah, they were face guarding me and it made it more difficult for me to get open, but uh, on the other hand, I mean, I had a chance to find my uh, teammates since they were all over me. So uh, it, I, I just got to get used to it. I know other teams are going to do the same thing to, to me and uh, just got to get used to it and get better at holding the ball and everything. So I, get, I gave them three goals before the game. One was take care of the basketball, which I thought we did a pretty good job. We only had nine turnovers and... Uh, uh, the, the second was to guard the dribble better than we've been guarding it. And most of the night, we were pretty good on that, too. The third, though, is uh, I, I, I don't know how to do it, but uh, rebounding is just killing us. Here's a look at the WAC standings. The Bronx among the 1-0 teams leading the way after the opening weekend of conference play. The Bronx are back on the road this weekend when they visit Seattle and Bakersfield. UTPA women's basketball also back on the court this past week, but unlike pretty much every other team in the nation, they had a fairly long winter break. Coming up on Bronx Country, we'll show you what the Bronx did with two and a half weeks between games. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. UTPA women's basketball had an interesting stretch of their own entering this past week, but unlike the men's basketball team, 
It wasn't because they were crisscrossing the country. After playing the busiest schedule in the NCAA to open the season, the Bronx went a whopping 16 days between games. A rare luxury for a college basketball team. We send it back out to Romeo with the story. With women's basketball playing an extremely tough non-conference schedule, which had them playing multiple games every week, both home and on the road, the team had two and a half weeks off where they didn't play a single game over the winter break. But that doesn't mean they weren't working hard to prepare for the start of conference play. Well, we wanted to get back to the basics. We ended the stretch not the way we quite wanted to, so we wanted to get everything rejuvenated, get our girls' legs back underneath them, and actually get back to the basics of where we isolating the individual work, the shell drill, getting back to the basics. Like we said, we wanted to get back to where we're shooting the ball well like we used to in the beginning of the season. We wanted to get back to where we would help side rotating. We wanted to really just get our girls back underneath them and give them a chance to get back in the weight room so that they know exactly what they're getting ready to face coming into the second half of the season, which is going to be the very most important part of the season for them. During the break, the team took the time to refocus on their game and improving skills that they may have struggled with during the first half of the season. Really, we kind of just did what we usually do. We focus on us. We worry about what we do. So we try to get better at transitions and we just do our own thing and we just practice what we know how to do and that's about it. Biggest thing is you don't really want to focus on just one opponent, but you also want to make sure you take a look at self in the mirror. And then for once you look at self in the mirror, you fix what you need to fix as a team, the little things that we could have done right against the VCUs, the Baylors, the Texas Techs, and the Texases. We looked, went back in, took a great look at that on film, and just honestly got, to, got a chance to show our girls film on their self so that they could see these are the little things that we need to work on to improve on for the most important stretch of our season so far, which is conference. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villarreal. So after all of that, the Bronx returned to the court at NJIT and dropped the tight one, 59-54. Shantae Goff led the way with 22 points, while Brittany Bush had 12. Great game for Raquel Preston, scoring seven points with career highs in rebounds, assists, and steals with 10, three, and six, respectively. The Bronx back in the win column on Saturday, opening whack play with a 75-60 win at Chicago State. Jose Wright with a career-high 16 points, going 6 of 9 from the field and 4 of 6 from behind the arc. Brittany Bush also with 16 points. The Bronx outscored the Cougars 28-11 over the final 10 and a half minutes to pull away for the win. Well, we were up in New Jersey. We got beat by the score of 58-54. Played uh, okay at some times. Others we didn't finish. We didn't play great defense and we didn't rebound, so we got to correct that. But the main thing is we came back and corrected against Chicago State. Had a good effort overall, 175-60. Had some girls that really stepped up their game, and it was uh, much needed. Here's a look at the WAC standings. The Bronx among the 1-0 teams leading the way after the first weekend of WAC play. The Bronx are back home this weekend when they take on Seattle and Bakersfield. Seattle is big. We played them here Thursday. They're big. Their post players are big. They like a, a high-low game. And then you got Cal State Bakersfield coming in here, who is the best team in our conference at this point. And she, and they have four people who can score, and they do a really good job. And while the basketball teams are just past the midway point of their seasons, the indoor track and field season is just getting started. Romeo Villarreal has the season preview. With the UTPA track and field team getting ready for the start of their indoor season, many on the team are setting their goals on a constant improvement throughout the year. The girls and I, we, we talk together, and it's mainly about improving from before. I mean, like, there's a lot of freshmen from the high school level, so they're going to be their first year at the college level. They're, they're just aiming to improve off their high school times and to gel more as a team so that next year coming off across country, they can do better. The team's first meet is this weekend, and Coach Richardson is looking for it to set the pace for the rest of the season. Well, the first meet, we're kind of shaking all the rust off. You know, they're athletes who haven't competed, you know, since last May. So, you know, it's kind of getting all the rust off, getting used to just competing again. So we want to see them going out this first weekend and really just compete hard, show us what they've got, you know, um, really have that chance to, to display. Uh, and then continue to work. We'll get back to work right afterwards and we'll work through the next two meets and work towards conference championships. So, you know, come conference, we want to see those that are going to go and make finals and make points and um, those that are going to sneak into finals, you know, when we don't expect them to and really just put as many points uh, up as we can as a team. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villarreal. One, two, three, Bronx! There's a new volleyball coach on campus 
and he brings four national championships as well as a 920 winning percentage with him. Next on Bronc Country, we introduce you to head coach Todd Lowry. When the search for a new volleyball coach began, Director of Athletics Chris King didn't have to look very far. Just down the road at UT Brownsville, there was a coach having incredible success. And with the UTB athletic program in its final season due to the creation of UTRGV, and the UTPA athletic program set to become the UTRGV athletic program, it was a natural fit. And the numbers more than back it up. In 12 years as a head coach, Lowry has won 92% of his games, including 94% over the last six years at UTB. He has guided his teams to four national championships, including three undefeated seasons. This past season, Lowry led UTB to a 34-5 record and the number two ranking in the nation after reaching the national championship match. His teams have produced 31 All-Americans, three Players of the Year, six Region MVPs, and six Conference MVPs. His teams have had cumulative GPAs of at least 3.09 times. Personally, Lowry has earned a National Coach of the Year Award, two National Tournament Coach of the Year Awards, 12 Regional Coach of the Year Awards, and six Conference Coach of the Year Awards. From uh, the first day that, that we made the decision to move in a different direction with the volleyball program, uh, we went out on a national search. Uh, you know, I've talked to a, a lot of Division I uh, volleyball coaches, a lot of different administrators uh, throughout the NCAA community. And, you know, in the back of my mind the entire time, of course, we had the guy down the road winning national championships and, and accolades, and, and he's always been the, the front runner uh, in my mind. I've known Todd now for the last uh, six years now, and, and what he's done with that program is just remarkable. And so when we got down to interviewing candidates, uh, I was really, to be honest with you, comparing everybody else uh, to, to Coach Lowry. And, and there was pretty much no doubt in my mind when we got down to the final stages that he was a guy. And we're pretty excited that we were able to uh, partner up and uh, bring him uh, on board here at UTPA and then, of course, next year at UTRGV. Wow, we're excited. Uh, it's definitely different. Uh, so just the, the support staff, um, the facilities, the travel, I mean, basically top to bottom in the program. It's a, it's a major step up for us. And uh, I think that's exciting, and sometimes that, that can be an advantage for us because we've kind of learned how to do without, and, and we have some kids that are going to see the, the facilities here, and they're going to be really excited, and, and it's also going to help in the future recruiting to be able to bring kids to this campus, and, and the changes they've made in the last three or four years are, are definitely moving things in the right direction. And while Coach Lowry takes over an existing team, men's soccer head coach Paul Lease is working towards restarting a team that has been on hiatus for 17 years. So this past fall, while all the other teams in the WAC were busy playing, what exactly was Coach Lease up to? Alfredo Zepeda has the story. Paul Lease was hired earlier this year in 2014 to kickstart the men's soccer team for this upcoming season. Uh, well, I'm from Liverpool, England, um, originally. And I actually grew up and, and played a lot of my youth soccer in Spain too. Um, I came to the US and, and played soccer at college. And from the moment I came over here, I realized the, the level of play um, and the environment too. I was very impressed. And, and that really did convince me to, to stay involved on the coaching side at the university, at the college level. Next year, Coach Lees will be preparing the men's soccer team on this very field. I've had a, a full year you know, to recruit for the team and to really get a good idea of what, you know, my kind of coaching philosophy will look like and what the team will look like um, this coming year. I've been all over the U.S., um, I've been out to California, um, been all over here in Texas as well as in the East Coast. I've even been across to Europe, um, you know, so really trying to take in as many talented players as we can. Um, and, you know, even here on, on campus right now, we have a lot of students that are very interested uh, in being part of the team. Uh, we have a group, uh, a small group of players right now that we're training and they've done very well. So right now there's a lot of talent in the area. I think my biggest challenge is going to be trying to put the best combination of players together. For Brown Country, I am Alfredo Cepeda. UTPA women's soccer has been busy since the season ended as well. 
promoting Sylvia Telespan from volunteer to full-time assistant coach. Since joining the Bronx, Telespan has assisted in technical, physical, and mental training, breaking down film, preparing scouting reports, and warming up the goalkeepers on game day. This is the second time Telespan has worked with Coach Bagariu, having served as a volunteer assistant coach at Bagariu's last stop, South Carolina State, in 2012. Yeah, obviously I'm very, very happy and uh, very enthusiastic to be able to, to continue to be part of the coaching staff as full time. Um, I think it's a tremendous opportunity for me and I, I embrace it. Well, it's a great hire. I mean, you only need to Google his name to know where, who he's been as a player and what he's accomplished as a coach. Um, he's worked with me in the past, so I know what he brought to the table. Uh, and he was a big part of uh, our success this year. And, uh, you know, at the same time, I feel that it's very important that we have a top-class coaching staff. I think that's the first step toward building a successful team. A coach of his caliber will be involved in all aspects of our, of our program. But at the same time, we all have uh, a major role to play to our success. And like I just said, you know, the, the most important part about building a team is, is first putting together a tremendous coaching staff. And if you look at any team in the country, any Division I women's soccer team, and you put our combined coaching and playing experience between myself, Lindsey Vera, and Sylvie Talashpan, you will not find a better coaching staff. So he just continues um, being part of a great staff, and he'll, he'll do a, a tremendous job for us. All of these coaches are helping to prepare our student athletes for excellence in life. Want to help? Then join the Bronx Athletic Fund today. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All the proceeds go directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit BronxAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. Women's basketball with its whack home opener Thursday against Seattle before a much anticipated matchup against preseason whack favorite Bakersfield. The men play the same two teams, albeit on the road. Track and field opens the indoor season Friday at Texas A&M. And just before our next show, the tennis teams open their seasons against UMBC, coached by former Bronx men's tennis star Rob Hubbard. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx Country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then... Go They are the dreamers and the promise of the future. They are the hope who will lead us to tomorrow. They are the givers who have the passion to serve. They are the visionaries who will celebrate discovery. They will make a difference. They will change South Texas.
We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference.